Hello, it's me Clayton. I just got back from watching Mission Impossible Fallout. Now, is this a mission you should choose to accept, much like the last two Mission Impossible movies? Yes, it is indeed. It's a mission that not only accepts every other film in the franchise, but also happens to pay tribute to them while also telling a great story in its own right. This is truly the fallout of everything that Ethan Hunt has done. Well, let's get to the story, shall we? The story is, of course, about Ethan Hunt, played once again by Tom Cruise, and the rest of his IMF team, as they have to stop an, someone by the name of John Lark from, from setting off nuclear, nuclear devices throughout, throughout the world. And along the way, he, he happens to get assistance from ben, Benji, Luther, uh, Henry, Henry Cavill's new character, Elsa Faust and a ton and pretty much almost every major character you can you can think of for this one big blowout But that's all I'll say about the story without spoiling anything. So let me just get get to the nitty-gritty of the review One of the things that the Mission Impossible movies are definitely known for more than any other franchise out there is Definitely the stunt work most of it done by Tom Cruise it's himself And I think his the stunts and action scenes in the film are some of the best in the entire franchise there's Ama there's an amazing scene that which pokes fun of how Tom Cruise has to run an insanely long distance in almost every single movie. The gadgets here are both ones you remember and some new ones for good measure. The CGI, when it's actually used, is integrated pretty much perfectly, so you don't even know it's there half the time. And all the fight scenes are very well choreographed, very well handled, and most of them feel pretty impactful. Also, the acting in the film is, of course, great. Tom Cruise, with the performance of a lifetime, in my opinion. It's amazing how many of these films he can do with, and, still, and how he still has that charm of his. And also, Ving Rhames and Simon Pegg return as Luther and Benji, and they're both really, really good. Rebecca Ferguson comes back as Ilsa Faust. She's great as well. She, her character does a great job. Alec Baldwin comes back. He's, he's great. Henry Cavill... Actually, it happens to pull an interesting little comparison between him and Tom Cruise, even if this is the film that forced him to have, a, to have his mustache digitally removed. Either way, it doesn't matter. He does a great job in the movie. Angela Bassett's character is pretty cool. Pretty much every actor who has a significant role in the film does a great job. And also, the cinematography and the music are both great. Some of, the, some of the shots and some of the music cues call back to great moments from other parts of Mission Impossible. There's even a few callbacks to Mission Impossible 1 and Mission Impossible 3, which makes sense considering the story here is sort of like the Brian De Palma first Mission Impossible movie, where it is pretty complicated for an action film and you need to listen to almost every single line spoken by the characters to get what's going on. It can be confusing for some, but at the same time, it's refreshing for an action film to treat its audience with the thought that they actually have intelligence, which is, like, which is more than I can say for some other action films that I've seen. And also, the, the references that are made to Mission Impossible 3, I won't spoil here, but let's just say anyone who loves that movie will certainly be surprised by a, by a lot of those things. One other thing that happens to put this film in the same league as Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation, if not a little bit higher, is the emotional is the emotional parts of the, of the story. The Mission Impossible films were always pretty silly when it comes to their delivery in some areas, but the emotional moments in this film really hit me hard, and, ma and they made me realize these seemingly disp disparate ad adventures that just came and went without a lot of without a lot of you know variants and differences between them and with a lot of them seeming like their own stories, this one finally seems to tie everything together, and it makes me wonder how they'll even make a Mission Impossible 7 if one actually comes to fruition. But if one does come to fruition, I'm totally fine with that, considering that it's a franchise unlike any other at this point. So with that being said, I give Mission Impossible Fallout a 9 out of 10. See you next time.